Hey everyone, welcome back to RDLP. I'm your host Solon, and when we last left Hustle Cat, we had just finished the game on uh, on Finley's path, and I told you that I would see you back at the basement because that's where we thought that we made some kind of poor decision. Turns out I've done my research, I've done my homework, not the case. Um, actually, how it happens to go is that getting all of the plus flags for Finley and getting all of the plus flags for Reese ends you out, once you pick the last decision, do you hang out with Finley or do you hang out with Reese? ends you out with the exact same number of uh, plus flags. You have the exact same number in both of them, and it just happens to overwrite to Finley, even though at the end you choose specifically, like, Reese. Uh, Reese only has three flags, Finley has four, you can get three and three, end up with Finley, and so, like, it was just kind of silly. Uh, a lot of the other choices just didn't happen to do anything. Um, hey, I called Finley hot stuff. <laughs> that's basically, that's literally what it comes down to, is that I just got real, real excited about Finley too, too many times. <laughs> and she got me, she played me, I got hustled. I got hustled in Hustle Cat, so, uh, fair enough. Fair enough, I accept this this beginning loss. However, the war will be mine. I have undid my decisions. I, instead of saying, hey, you're cool, I was like, whatever. And I played cool. I overcooled Finley. And now, instead of me just being like, la la la, whatever, I'm like, I'm stone cold now. I'm stone cold Avery. Um, the only other bit of housekeeping I wanted to do was that I uh, talked to people between recordings on Twitter about this Hustle Cat ending and Finley. And a lot of people were like, Finley's the best, Finley's the best, Finley's the best. It was one of the most affecting experiences that I've had with Visual Novel. Um, and that is especially attributed to the fact that you can choose your own gender pronouns and your own performed uh, identity. How the, Just having differences in how you want to perform. Um, and having that as part of your route with Finley was really important for people and it was really cool for people and I was like that's amazing I did not have the exact same I did not have necessarily the same level of intimacy between Avery and Finley and I talked about that at the end of the last episode um, and I think it had to do with my little sweet sweet baby boy Avery kind of ending up as like this weird white knight middling character whereas uh, if if Avery was not that sweet, sweet baby precious boy, um, and more of a, a naive girl or someone of uh, non-specific gender running into this, I think a lot of these little tiny interstitial moments that you have with uh, with Finley would have been actually colored a little differently, and would have kind of caused that shift in tonal change within the relationship in really cool ways, in really interesting ways. And for a dating sim especially, who has the frontal, like, has to do all this front-loading work in its protagonist's narrative to hold up everything, multiple storylines, an entire universe, all of this is centered on a main protagonist, that's amazing. That's a little more next level than something like a Bioware game letting you choose any kind of gender, or like what Saints Row does, which they do a lot of awesome work too, but this is kind of like some next level stuff where you get new interpretations based on how you perform the game and what you bring into it. That's cool. That's cool. That makes that brings Hustle Cat to that next level. It's like this is a thesis statement for how to write protagonists in ways that have not yet been explored uh, in the same way. And I'm like, this is rad. Uh, someone else brought up that this is a lot like ROM too, Read Only Memories, which is also on the channel. Um, and I kind of get that. But if you think about ROM, Read Only Memories, the protagonist is very specific. Uh, there's only a couple ways that you can perform that character because they have such a long arc in such an enmeshed story between a lot of different characters. Uh, that protagonist is not necessarily the focus of the story, which also skews it in a little bit of a different direction. Um, but it's the same idea, and I really liked bringing that up into it. The, the conversation's amazing. Anyway, that is kind of all the housekeeping that I want to do finishing up Finley's route, and as we introduce ourselves into Reese's route. 
where I specifically wanted to be a boy to play into Reese's route. Um, and I want to see what kind of flavors that brings out. Like a like an aromatic cup of coffee, as we see on the, the screen. Um, depending on the style of beans that you put into your roast, you will get different hints and different flavors. And so, let's see what notes arise from the uh, cappuccino we blend with uh, Reese. With Reese. So, continue the game. We are set back at the exact moment. We are set back at the final choice in the game. This is how we know who we are going to be dating. We go to the basement, or we can go to the apartment. But I like the basement better, because it's like that sneaky, like, seven minutes of heaven kind of thing. Where where it's like a subversive, kind of. So, we go to the basement, and we see who our lucky lover is. It worked the first time we went to the basement. Here, um, if you don't remember where the story sets us at this point, we're looking for Graves. And the last time we found Graves, he was in the basement. Um, Graves just, like, disappeared all of a sudden. Um, so I'm guessing everything after this point, I have to keep in context with Finley's route that we played just now, that a lot of that stuff did not happen, and we were at the point where Graves just left for the first time, and we had ourselves a nice little laugh. Um, we did not meet a guy in an alleyway. That's one of the important things too. Maybe Graves is a hapless idiot caught up in someone else's plan. Maybe I'm supposed to think he's a witch, but it's actually someone else using him as a cover. Would that be messed up if it's one of the other workers at the cafe? We're trying to figure out who's this witch. I can't see any of them as the mastermind type, but what do I know? Well. Suppose I should prepare myself for some snooping. It's weird going back in time and space and having like a completely different outcome. Okay, ready? Cross your fingers. We should be seeing our boy Reese. Oh, we very much should be seeing our boy Reese. <laughs> boy, this place gives me the chills. I mean, it, I mean it. It's like 10 degrees cooler down here than it is upstairs. Now, if I were a witch, where would I hide my witchery and witching accessories? Ah, uh, so witch and witching accessories. I'd take a brief walk to the immediate left of the stairs, but there's nothing here but a cat ca a cafe, but cafe and cat supplies. Maybe the bulk coffee is also ground up and used to make arcane sigils. Or maybe I'm I'm reaching. I'm Stretch Armstrong over here. The right of the stairs is the more interesting stuff anyway. All that good stuff. Look at them geodes under a lamp. <laughs> Giant ass geode. Ah, oh, I kneel down to get a closer look at the curio, filled with crystals, when I hear something creaking above me. Crap! Graves is gonna catch me. Nah, he left. I'm hearing things. I resume my hunt for the sneaky, sneaky witch stuff. Maybe these are magic crystals after all. Creak, creak! Avery! Yeah! It's Reese! We did it! Yes! Yeah! Let's date Reese now. Avery, what are you doing? Oh. Hey, Reese. Looking around. Why? You shouldn't be snooping. This is uh, sensitive material down here. What, like those Halloween decorations? Are all those witch decals supposed to be a secret? Like it's a secret that Graves loves Halloween. That's not what I mean. I'm not looking for like the accounting books or something if that's what you're thinking. Those aren't down here. Does Reese know something about this whole magic business? He sure is acting suspicious. Ah, I think this is going to be a very consistent timeline, as opposed to some other uh, visual novels where the timelines get real wacky after you separate. Um, I think Reese might still be that like right-hand man, the, the magician's assistant. You're acting like you know something about this place. Of course I do. I'm the assistant manager. It's not what I mean, and you know it. Are you gonna try and make me spill my secrets? I'll never tell. You're just messing with me. There's nothing down here, is there? There may be. There may not. What was I thinking? He doesn't know anything. He's just being a brat like usual. Then you don't mind if I keep looking around. I certainly do mind. I'm watching you. You can watch me look through this pile of old dusty books, then. 
I'd rather you didn't. He seems a bit nervous. Maybe he does know something about magic after all. Maybe I'm onto something witchy. Well now, I definitely have to look. It sounds like the trail's getting hot. N no, there's nothing in there. Ooh, what are we getting into? Cat book, cat book, cat book, Yahtzee! What's this one? There's a book in here that's covered with brown paper. Very suspicious. Nothing, it's nothing. Very suspicious. Oh, <laughs> poor Reese. He's just an open book, isn't he? He just he can't hide nothing. I'm gonna take a look. The Witching Hour. Give me that. Takes a dive for the book, but I dodged just in time. Aha! Sweet baby Jesus. It's the 80s band Aha with the famed hit song Take On Me. I knew it! He does know something about this magic stuff. Nope, this is mine now. And I'm gonna blow this place's secrets wide open. I tell you what. Give me that book! Reese lunges again, but I'm too fast for him. I crack the book open, start to skim the best I can while holding it out of his reach. Something about cauldrons, potions. I knew it! Quit it! I flip the page as best I can while holding him back with the other hand. More stuff about potions, love potions, something about a heaving bosom. Uh. Uh. Wait, hold up. What? Is this like. Reese tackles me with the speed of an embarrassed cheetah and knocks us both over the force I couldn't imagine he was capable of if it didn't just happen to me. I said, give me that! Oh my god, he's bright red. I didn't take you as the romance novel type. It's, it's not mine. It was here already. But you read it. No, I didn't. Why are you so embarrassed then? Because! Because shut up! He snaps the book from my hand and sits up. I'm still flat on my butt on the ground, both literally and figuratively. Who would have thought he was the sappy type? Oh, okay, Reese. You got little, some little interests that I am not aware of until now. Our seven minutes in heaven are uh, maybe about up here, but boy, did I come out with a lot of heaven! I'm not gonna tell anybody you like Bodis Rippers, dude. Or maybe I will. Don't worry about it. He doesn't respond. His shoulders are all bunched up and he won't face me. I think he's gonna tear that book in half if I don't say something. You ever read The Dragon Pirate? Let's find some common ground here. Come on, buddy. It's about a pirate who's secretly a dragon and also a princess. She's in like three different love triangles. It's real steamy. Don't make fun of me. I'm not! No, I'm being serious. That's my favorite book in high school. You should read it. I brought my copy with me when I moved here. I'll lend it to you. If you do, I'll be merciful and forget this transgression ever happened. I beg your mercy, you great strapping warlock. Now we flirt. We flirting hard now. Yeah! Just shut it! He storms up the stairs but stops halfway. Bring that book tomorrow. What a nerd. Steamy high fantasy! We've got things in common. Well, that was a bust. Except not at all. Not a bust at all. It's kind of nice to talk to Reese, I guess. Feels good to get closer, to be getting closer to everybody here. It's sort of like I finally have a social life. Well, sort of. I guess I'm still hanging out with a bunch of cats one way or another. But isn't that life? Isn't that just what life is? You just hang out with cats all the time. Cool cats, cold cats, hot cats, stone cats, goblin cats, witchcraft cats, crat brother cats. Sorry, I've lost the plot. Uh, back to the drawing table. Let's head on back. I drift from person to person, helping everybody with what they're doing for a while, but eventually the urge takes over. I just want to play with cats. All right, we know this section. This is where we are going to transition from uh, the main like intro plot line to specializing. So we are going to fall asleep in a pile of cat of cats and cat toys, right? Right. I think that's what happened last time. And Finley's gonna mess with us. 
Will someone please exhume Avery from that pile in the corner? Hey guys. Garland on my head. Cat toys everywhere. And then let's uh let's skip ahead a little bit. This is where maybe this is all gonna come together where uh Graves does reveal that he his backstory is like he's part of a band and or was part of a band and maybe this witch coven rivalry thing was still part of all the other plots. Why stop with your brand? Guy with the mohawk. And we're gonna do the lyrics thing again. Et tu, Hayes, you all so cruel. Hayes is gonna sing the Spider Coven theme song. Trapped within my moon mind, something, something in French. My will dissolve the blood. Soul's red rind, life's but a march to death. Graves and listening to us. And that should bring us to the uh, main plot. Oh, Rusty Bike is still in the plot too. Okay. I like I like this like uh, getting to finally play some compare and contrast. What is similar? What isn't? Coming hot off of amnesia memories, where the very first decision you make is which plot line do you want to go down, and all four of them are just like wildly different. <laughs> this is nice. Nice to see some common common ground. Okay, that puts us at. Uh, day one. I've seen him stare in the window of the cafe for a long time, up to the third floor. Interesting, he does go to that third floor often. Rusty handprints. 